At 11.20 p.m. on August 5, 2023, Richard Tobin called the police in Bel Air, Maryland after his girlfriend had failed to return from a run. 37-year-old Rachel Morin had gone to the Mar and Par Heritage Trail, a well-trodden hiking route at around 6 p.m. The following day, the mother of five's battered naked body was found in a drainage culvert by a search party volunteer. The authorities didn't disclose specifics regarding her death but noted that she'd been the victim of a violent homicide described as an egregious, horrific act. Tobin had a substantial criminal record that included resisting arrest, second-degree assault and violating restraining orders. But he denied any involvement in his girlfriend's death. The only evidence regarding the identity of her killer initially came in the form of DNA from the scene, which was analyzed by Maryland State Police and entered into a national database called the Combined DNA Index System. It proved a match to a sample collected from a March home invasion robbery and assault carried out in Los Angeles. A doorbell camera captured a shirtless man leaving the home through the front door with an item of clothing in hand. His face wasn't visible in the footage and his DNA from the California crime scene had been recovered from a cap. He became the main suspect in Maureen's murder. Harford County Sheriff Jeff Gala was quoted at one point as saying of the perpetrator, I have no doubt in my mind. If he's not apprehended, he will become a serial killer. Gala reported that he had a gut feeling the suspect had been stalking Maureen as witnesses had reported seeing someone matching the description of the person in the home surveillance footage on the hiking trail. The sheriff believed that he'd been present in the community for weeks leading up to the incident. In the months following Morin's murder, multiple federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies worked together to carry out over 100 interviews and follow up on more than a thousand tips. But the identity of Morin's killer remained a mystery. He was described as a five foot nine man in his mid twenties to thirties, possibly of Hispanic descent, who was of a muscular build, weighed about 160 pounds and had dark hair. As of updates from February of 2024, the authorities released two sketches, one showing the suspect wearing a red cap and the other featuring his close cropped hair. Number seven, Justin Vicky. Indonesian bodybuilder and fitness influencer Justin Vicky was working out at the Paradise Gym in Denpasar, Bali on July the 15th of 2023. As shown in the 33-year-old social media posts, Vicky often performed back squats with progressive loads of up to 440 pounds. During his July training session, Vicky was reportedly going for a personal record as he lifted the barbell weighing roughly 460 pounds from a standing position off the rack and placed it on his shoulders. A partner assisted him in the lift to ensure that he wouldn't hurt himself and there was another man sitting close by to lend further assistance. A viral clip of the lift would show Vicky lowering himself to the floor, but he was then unable to push the massive weight back up again. His legs gave way and his partner struggled with the weight and fell backwards. Before dropping to the gym floor, the barbell rolled forward over Vicky's neck and head. As the third man intervened, the barbell was almost entirely supported by the back of Vicky's neck, inflicting devastating injuries. The bodybuilder, who'd won the International Fitness and Bodybuilding Federation competition in 2018, slumped into the arms of his training partner, unconscious and with a broken neck. The fracture compromised vital nerves linked to Vicky's heart and respiratory system. On July the 16th, he underwent surgery at Wangaya Regional General Hospital in Denpasar. Shortly thereafter, he slipped into a coma and passed away. Number 6. Leilson de Souza. 36-year-old Brazilian tour guide, Leilson de Souza was leading a group of hikers through a trail at Tijuca National Park in Rio de Janeiro in November of 2023. As reported by 26-year-old Carla Arujo, de Souza had told the group that it would rain in the afternoon, adding that it should be all right for them to continue on the trail given that the weather could change hourly. When it started raining midway through their two-hour hike to a peak, the group unanimously agreed to continue with the guide, reportedly telling them that there was still a chance they might get a view in the sun at the top. As Arujo was recording a selfie on the peak, D'Souza was seen walking towards the edge of a rock in the background. A loud cracking sound was then heard. While Arujo was striking various poses for the camera, she winced and screamed with a distressed expression on her face. The young woman 
would quickly discover that D'Souza had been struck by lightning. The guide remained unresponsive and an air ambulance was called. D'Souza, who'd been leading hiking groups for 10 years, passed away before paramedics could reach him. Arujo subsequently told Brazilian media outlet, G1, we were in total despair. I wanted to go down, but at the same time, I was afraid because more lightning could strike. The hikers were safely led down the mountain by one of D'Souza's brothers, who'd also been working towards becoming a guide. D'Souza's grieving family described him as an excellent person and reportedly had trouble accepting that he'd been fatally struck by lightning. With another of his brothers telling Globo, we imagine dying anyway, passing away anyway, but by lightning, it's complicated. Number 5. Amy Adamson In July of 2023, Kansas woman Amy Adamson went missing while exploring a trail near Yellowstone National Park. Adamson was already presumed dead before her body was found on July the 22nd at the Buttermilk Trail, west of the park. A hiker had called the authorities after coming across the woman's savaged body. Officials reported that Adamson's death was consistent with a bear attack. Tracks from an adult grizzly and at least one cub were found near the scene, but there was no sign of the animal responsible. Officials reported that Adamson had been attacked in an area west of West Yellowstone known as Bear Country, noting that she'd been hiking alone while wearing running shoes and not carrying bear spray or any other form of protection. In an interview with Good Morning America, 47-year-old Adamson's mother reported that her daughter would get up early every morning to hike or run in the park. The woman was quoted as saying, running through that beauty of Yellowstone, she was almost in heaven. She died doing what she loved. Number 4. Julia Mary Lane In June of 2023, Australian expat Julia Mary Lane posted on a Facebook group asking for advice about hiking trails in British Columbia, Canada. 24-year-old Lane wrote that she was visiting from Canmore, west of Calgary, and looking for moderate to challenging hikes while expressing concerns over hiking alone due to the risk of bears in the area. The young woman, who'd moved to Canada in January, ultimately settled on Bear Lake Trail, which was known as a challenging route. Roughly two days after the Facebook post, Lane was reported missing by her roommate. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police found Lane's SUV parked at the bottom of the trail and then deployed sniffer dogs and drones. The RCMP found Lane's lifeless body and deduced that she'd slipped and fallen to her death in steep terrain. RCMP Corporal James Grandy told the media that Lane's demise wasn't considered suspicious as she was alone at the time of the incident. Number 3. Ryan Furtado A week before his 33rd birthday in January of 2022, Ryan Furtado was doing a core exercise involving his Peloton bike at his apartment in Brooklyn, New York City. The routine that Furtado was performing had the user dismount the bike and conduct further exercises on the floor. Furtado did so, and upon rising back to his feet, used the Peloton as leverage to assist himself as he pulled on it the bike spun around, striking him in the face and neck. The equipment piece severed Furtado's carotid artery, and he bled to death on the floor of his apartment. When the NYPD eventually found his body, the bike was reportedly lying on his face. Updates from the fall of 2023 indicated that Furtado's mother, Johanna, was suing Peloton. The suit argued that the company should have identified the foreseeable misuse of the bike under the circumstances which had led to Furtado's death. Peloton responded that the accident had occurred due to Furtado's own negligence, intentional act and or fault, maintaining that the company wasn't responsible. Peloton's profile skyrocketed during the coronavirus pandemic, but the company faced plunging sales and a dip in popularity in the aftermath. They had to issue recalls for equipment pieces that were involved in serious accidents, most notably the Peloton Tread Plus. The model was linked to at least two incidents of children being dragged by the treadmill, resulting in one brain injury and one fatality. Today's topic was requested by Scotty Lewis, 8124, Selena, 6317, and Sean Delap, 8587. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Del Rey Rosario 
on July the 21st of 2023, Del Rey Rosario was at an LA fitness gym in Kent, Washington, where she was working out on a treadmill. The 36-year-old mother of four was accompanied by her sister, Marissa Woods. The latter would later report that Rosario had missed a step while trying to slow the treadmill down. Rosario slipped forward and smashed her head into the machine, losing consciousness. As she collapsed, she was thrown off by the treadmill. Woods witnessed the accident and screamed, Anybody, just please help! Anybody know how to do CPR? She remembered other gym goers offering assistance but noted that the staff didn't intervene. Woods explained, I think they were in shock. Rosario remained unresponsive and was subsequently rushed to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Woods told the media that her sister was a registered organ donor and that five people benefited from potentially life-saving transplants in the incident's wake. Emphasizing, just think, somebody's walking around with her big heart. We will line up our previous release about when going to the gym goes wrong right after number one. Stick around if you haven't seen that one yet and would like to. Number one, Higelanio da Silva. In August of 2023, Brazilian man, Higelanio da Silva was taking a break between exercises while working out at a fitness center in Juazeiro do Norte, Sierra. CCTV from the 220 Fit Gym would show 42-year-old da Silva sitting on the platform of a squat machine, as described by a gym manager. The equipment featured plates on the side with a center lock, enabling users to do conventional squats rather than freestyle squats. It was loaded at the time with plates totaling 330 pounds. As the silver rested on the platform between his sets, the machine's lever fell forward and the full weight of its load dropped on his neck in a guillotine-like manner. The moment was compared by internet users to a scene from the Final Destination horror franchise, a staple of which was featuring deaths from freak accidents. The clip went viral and was picked up by international media outlets. De Silva survived as several other gym goers swiftly intervened to free him from the machine's crushing weight. He underwent emergency surgery at Santo Antonio Hospital for four hours as staff struggled to stabilize his neck. According to De Silva's family, the $7,000 cost of the surgery was split between his loved ones and the gym. 220 Fit maintained that the squat machine had been bought less than two months prior and was in perfect condition. Updates on De Silva's condition indicated that he could move his arms but had no mobility in his legs. His neurosurgeon, Dr. Jose Correa, told news outlet G1 it is the most serious injury there is from the point of view of neurological damage. Correa added there was less than 1% chance De Silva would walk again noting that there was no bone continuity from his rib cage to his lumbar region. Number 9. Philip Roberts In late January of 2015, at a 24-hour fitness facility in Irving, Texas, a man randomly stabbed another gym goer while she was on the treadmill. Local authorities were first called to the gym after witnesses had noticed suspicious behavior from 32-year-old Philip Roberts, who was wearing a trench coat and carrying a suitcase. Roberts had been working out with a guest membership and regulars at the gym had seen him with his suitcase before. Another call was placed roughly 20 minutes after the first to report that Roberts had repeatedly stabbed a woman with a screwdriver. Justin Harper, a former police officer for the Blue Mound Police Department, was working out only a few feet from where the attack had occurred. Roberts had approached the unnamed victim as she was walking on the treadmill and stabbed her in the back. Afterwards, both he and her fell in front of Harper's treadmill. The former officer and another gym goer tackled the attacker and held him to the ground. Harper later told a media outlet that he suspected Roberts had mental health issues, noting that he had a crazed, glazed over look in his eyes. It was only after the police had arrived at the scene that Harper saw Roberts had a particularly dull Phillips head screwdriver with him. The victim was rushed to a Dallas hospital with three puncture wounds to her neck and back, from which she was reportedly left with a punctured lung. Fortunately, she wasn't described as being in life-threatening condition. According to Harper, whom the victim's husband thanked for his intervention, Roberts had told the police that the attack had simply popped into his head. He was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and held on a $100,000 bail. Number 8. Charles Lalonde In the summer of 2018, a video began circulating online of a teenager 
was violently thrown out of a gym in Montreal, Canada for deadlifting too loudly. On August 2nd, Charles Lalonde, aged 19, had set up his phone to record himself as he pulled 350 pounds at the BuzzFit Center. He was planning on sending the footage to his trainer, but it ended up showing the altercation instead. As Lalonde was making his lift attempt, another man, wearing a tank top with the word animal printed on it, aggressively approached him. He stepped on Lalonde's barbell and pushed it down, causing the teenager to abruptly drop the heavyweight. The move could have resulted in Lalonde being seriously injured, and although he wasn't hurt, the video would show him wincing in the moments that followed. A heated exchange ensued in which the other man repeatedly told Lalonde, you're out, before pushing him into a wall. The teenager had reportedly been warned by gym staff in the past about his loud deadlifting and told that he had to place shock-absorbing mats under the discs if he wanted to continue using the facility. He complied, but the other weightlifter, who wasn't reported as a BuzzFit worker, took it upon himself to kick him out. The video of the confrontation went viral in the aftermath and has been viewed over 9 million times on YouTube alone. Staff banned the unnamed aggressor from the gym while Lalonde was offered a year-long free membership to his dream gym in Montreal, SSP Barbell Club. Number 7. Essex Gym Altercation In November of 2019, a brutal fight erupted at a fitness centre in Essex, England, in which men battered each other using pieces of fitness equipment. It's unclear what led to the altercation, which was captured on video by another gym-goer at the Absolute Gym in Brentwood. The footage showed a group pinning a man wearing a blue tracksuit against a weight rack and striking him repeatedly in the head and body with metal bars. In a separate scene of the conflict, one gym goer raised a detached pull-down bar above his head and swung it at a rival involved in the melee. Perhaps the most shocking moment in the expletive laid in footage was of a man curled up on the floor in the fetal position and protecting his head with a disc weight as a brawler kicked him in the back and struck him with a dumbbell bar. None of those involved were identified, but a police report did mention that a man in his late teens suffered bruising and cuts while another, aged 27, was left with a cut above his eye. Absolute described the fight as an isolated incident, reaffirmed its stance against violence, and mentioned that all of the men taking part in the row were banned for life. Number 6. Blythe Mason Boyle in March of 2019, shortly after leaving the NRJ Fitness Gym in Birmingham, England, a young woman was viciously attacked by a carjacker in his late teens. Blythe Mason Boyle, aged 24, had just finished her workout and was heading to her Audi A1 parked on Coventry Road, Sheldon. Majid Ali approached a woman and without provocation or warning, struck her in the head with a hammer. Before Mason Boyle could regain her composure, he drove off in her vehicle. The victim suffered cuts to her face and a shattered eye socket which resulted in permanent vision damage. Photos released by the police would show her with a severely swollen eye from which blood poured down to her chest. Mason Boyle would also need counselling in the aftermath to overcome the trauma of her ordeal. Local authorities were tipped off and identified Ali as the perpetrator, locating the Audi within 24 hours of the violent carjacking. The hammer used in the attack was found hidden underneath a sofa bed after a warrant was executed at his Spark Hill home. 18-year-old Ali denied charges of robbery, possession of an offensive weapon and wounding, but the police proved he'd been responsible and noted he felt no remorse over the attack. Ali was found guilty less than a year after the incident and was given a two-year and nine-year sentence to run concurrently. Number 5. Jaime Antonio Mesa Roughly five months after he and his girlfriend had broken up in 2018, Colombian man Jaime Antonio Mesa kept visiting the same gym as her in the city of Segovia. Mesa, who worked as a miner, reportedly hoped they'd reconcile the relationship, which had lasted for about 10 years prior to their separation. Surveillance footage would show them talking on a flight of stairs. The verbal exchange remained unclear, but it devolved into Mesa pouncing on the unnamed woman and punching her in the face. He dragged her to the ground by her hair, whereupon his barrage of strikes persisted. Mesa then attempted to flee up the stairs, but his ex-girlfriend charged after him and pulled him down, causing the man to fall onto his back on the bottom step. As they struggled on the gym floor, Mesa once again ended up in top position and continued punching the woman with even greater force than in the altercation's earlier stage. Before leaving the room, he kicked his ex-girlfriend in the back of the head, then flung her across the room by her hair. According to updates on the matter, the woman was hospitalized in serious but stable condition while the police had started looking to arrest Mesa but still hadn't brought him into custody. 
Number 4. Incident in Mexico City In February of 2022, a harrowing surveillance video began circulating online of a woman who suffered a fatal accident at a gym in Mexico City. The unnamed 42-year-old was shown attempting to squat a barbell that had been loaded with approximately 400 pounds. The small-framed gym-goer lifted the weight, equivalent to that of a silverback gorilla, off the rack and for a few seconds appeared to be in control of it. She then started a downward motion, but her entire body buckled underneath the tremendous weight as her daughter and another weightlifter looked on in shock. She slumped to the ground with the barbell on her neck. Others in the gym rushed to her aid and lifted the weight off her, and the woman collapsed backwards unconscious. With blood pouring from her head, paramedics from the Red Cross subsequently pronounced the woman dead at the scene. The Mexico City Office of the Attorney General launched an investigation into the incident, but no further information was made available to the media as of early March 2022. Number 3. Christmas Abbott TV personality Christmas Abbott narrowly avoided serving a jail sentence following an incident outside a gym in Tampa, Florida in August of 2018. Abbott, who a year prior had finished third on the 19th season of Big Brother US, had recently found out that Benjamin Bunn, the father of her child, had been having an affair. The CrossFit star was eight months pregnant at the time, and she drove to the gym, which was owned by Bunn, to confront him and the alleged mistress named as Samantha Morse. Upon entering the facility, she started screaming at Bun, while referring to Morse as a pathetic homewrecker, and threw an iced coffee across the room. Once outside, she got into her Mercedes-Benz SUV and rammed Morse's car multiple times. When an officer arrived at the scene, Abbott began crying and confessed to have lost it and crashed her Benz into the car because its owner had been allegedly sleeping with her child's father. Due to the advanced state of her pregnancy, the arresting officers didn't take her into custody, but issued a warrant that would allow Abbott to turn herself in after she gave birth. On October the 8th, about a month after her son was born, the TV personality faced the legal consequences of her car-smashing rampage and was charged with felony criminal mischief. Following a plea agreement, she was sentenced to 12 months probation and 25 hours of community service ordered to pay $1,357.95 in restitution and complete an anger management class. Number 2. Roseville LA Fitness Row In March of 2014, a mass brawl, the quelling of which required the intervention of local authorities, erupted at an LA fitness gym in Roseville, Minnesota. The fighting had reportedly started out on the basketball court before spilling into the fitness area where four men had chased another. 10 to 15 men, some of whom attempted to defuse the situation, were ultimately involved in the altercation. The man that the group of four had been chasing was directed by the LA fitness manager to stay by the front desk and juice bar. Police Lieutenant Lorne Rosend told a media outlet that the others then started throwing two and a half, five and 10 pound weights at the bar and their male target. They also used barbells and a trash can lid as projectiles in their onslaught. Police officers were successful in tempering the situation and six men were taken into custody. Three were identified as Minneapolis residents Ali Yusuf Bare and Abdi Rashid Yassin Duat, both 18, and Burnsville man Mohammed Awil Suleiman, aged 20. They were charged with disorderly conduct and participation in a riot. The LA Fitness location had been plagued with crime in recent years. In 2013, Roseville police responded to 147 incidents at the gym, and in 2014, officers had already been called two dozen times in the months leading up to the mass brawl. Number 1. Samuel Kiwaz On March the 19th, at an Anytime Fitness location in Culver City, California, a man was knocked off his treadmill after an SUV plowed through the floor-to-ceiling glass window near him. The victim, Samuel Kiwaz, would later report, It's a miracle that I'm alive. He'd been warming up on a treadmill in preparation for a group fitness class as the Mercedes SUV came crashing through the window. It made contact with Kiwaz's treadmill and launched him off it, also sending a multitude of glass shards in his direction. Kiwaz flew back into a door which opened as he hit it, saving him from further injuries as the treadmills were pushed into the walls by the crashing vehicle. An employee helped into his feet, wiping blood from his face and mouth. The female driver of the SUV, who'd allegedly experienced a failure of the brakes on her vehicle, also got out to check if Kiwaz was all right but then attempted to leave. She was stopped from fleeing by an off-duty officer working out at the gym and later interviewed by the authorities. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have to do 10 push-ups whenever someone said your name or get slapped 
Whenever you laughed out loud, let us know in the comments section below. 